So after the spawn, a lot of these fish head offshore, and where do a lot of them head? Grass. This is something that almost all the lakes across the country have, and deep grass specifically can be one of the hardest and most frustrating things out there. But what I want to talk about today is how I go about fishing deep grass, some of the areas that I look for, and what not to fish. And that's going to help you guys catch a ton more fish if you guys watch this video, so stay tuned. Where people most often mess up with fishing deep grass is they try to fish where the grass tapers off. And what you want to do is you want to fish that grass will come out, be topped off, topped off, and then it'll start to taper. And you want to fish right on that point where it breaks off, where you can last visually see it is going to be key to flipping and you fishing a lot of this deeper grass. Now there are going to be some circumstances where you can fish some isolated patches of grass, and that's going to be really, really important for something that I really want to talk about later in the video because at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about smallmouth and deep grass. So if you're a northern guy, you're definitely going to want to stick around till the end. But right now, let's keep talking about where I like to find them in deep grass. And so I like to use the contours of the lake to let them show me where the fish are going to set up. And what you the way you have to think about it is where is the bait going to come across? Because if those fish are setting up in deep grass, it's because there's food sources there and it's an ambush point. And so what I like to do is figure out where bait would have to travel that edge and where it's going to create a path that those fish have to come across. And so I'm going to look for those isolated patches outside of it because those are going to hold big numbers of fish that a lot of time people don't see. But then I'm going to go back to my Navionics or my Lake Master Chip and find bellies, find points. The same thing we talked about with the dock fishing video and the same thing we talked about with fishing the lily pad video. This is something that always comes down is points, humps, high spots. Anything where I think that grass can grow offshore is going to be places where I am going to love it. And so looking for those isolated patches is key, but then going to these massive flats that everybody gets super overwhelmed with and finding the key areas within that area. And so to do that, like I said, I'm going to do a lot of graphing around with my side imaging units. I have Helix 10s right here, and I'm just gonna idle along these big grass edges to see if there's any isolated clumps, find where there's bends, see if there's any key spots along it, whether there's rocky patches, hard bottom, or where the points and everything comes out, because that's gonna be really key to figuring out where these groups of fish are gonna load up offshore. So the way these groups of fish work offshore is the deeper the grass, the more bass that will be in each school. So when you get out 10, 12 feet of water, if you catch one fish, a lot of times there could be 15 or 20 of them in that small area. Once you, you know, you get up into the five foot area, you might only have five to six fish in that area. So I love finding deeper offshore fish because it really, really, really can be really awesome fishing. You can get into some of these little stretches and go back and forth and just sit there and pick them off one by one. And honestly, flipping is one of my absolute favorite techniques, that big line, big weight, and the baits I'm going to get into here in a little bit, but it can just be some of the most epic fishing out there. It's truly combat fishing hand to hand. There's nothing Nothing absolutely like it. So there's a few different baits that I really like to throw in these deep grass areas, fishing these deep grass lines and fishing offshore grass. And you can throw your chatter baits, your, your liplesses, but honestly, I'm talking about more so fishing these matted grass areas where that grass has come up to its highest and you really can't throw any moving baits through it. You can get away with the top water when it's overcast, but my true passion is going to be flipping it, fishing the edges, and to do that, I'm going to do a punching style rig or a Texas rig with a heavy weight, you know, my go-to is an ounce and a quarter. That's generally what I always go with. I go from an ounce to an ounce and a half. You might have to go up depending on how thick the grass is, but that's a good gauge as to where to start when you're flipping a Texas rig. I'm a Z-Man guy, so I flip Z-Man soft plastics. I like that Z-Man palmetto bug. It has been one of my absolute favorite baits. I have one laying right here. It has been one of my absolute favorite baits because of that Elaztec, and that's not a pitch. When I fish with some of my buddies, they can't believe how many fish that I catch on one of these baits compared to the number of fish that they, or baits that they have to go through for two fish because up north and when you're fishing grass you're around a lot of different species of fish. Up here we're around a lot of pike, a lot of pickerel, anywhere you have bluegill, perch, crappie, everything, white bass, they're all tearing at that and so having a bait that can really last through that and having to be able to go through that grass is really really critical for me and so that palmetto bug has been one of my absolute favorites and my staples and you have to be prepared to throw the right gear on this. And I'm gonna have all the rods and reels linked down below like I always do. I'm an art guy. I love their products and that's not even a pitch. I would be going with them even if I wasn't 
sponsored by them right now, I would still be with them because of how much I love their rods. And so a flipping bait is my go-to. After that, I also love a drop shot. Drop shotting some of these grass lines can be absolutely amazing in getting bites behind a lot of people because a lot of people go through flipping, but they really don't try to clean up at all. And so going back through with a finesse worm, I like that Z-Man SMH worm, super, super durable. And you just go back through and catch a ton of fish and you can catch some really big fish, especially when the conditions get tough. If you get really high skies, we have some cloud cover, but that sun's starting to peak out. You can really, really catch a lot of fish when the conditions are at their toughest by flipping and also by going going back through with that drop shot. One of the ways people also really don't ever think about fishing deep grass is throwing a wacky rig. Throwing a weightless Sanko through some of that grass can be absolute dynamite under super, super tough conditions. So always having those on deck has been really, really important for me. And the one thing that I wanna talk about when you get certain conditions in this grass is how you have to change your fall rates because fall rate is gonna be one of the most frustrating things that you're gonna to have to deal with. And those fish either want a fast or a slow fall rate. And I only mess around with a couple different lures for this situation. I will throw a jig. I'll throw a big jig when I want a slower fall rate because I'll put a, t a trailer on there like the Z-Man Goat that has those little legs on there. Uh, a Strike King Rage Bug or a Rage Craw is also really good for that. And so what that does with this bulky profile is it slows that bait down a little bit. And so that's something that I'm always going to try to do. Use a little bit bulkier presentation with a slower fall and then just a straight Texas rig to have that faster fall so it'll trigger them better. Overcast conditions you might want to go with that slower bulkier presentation because they can't see it as good and so that's going to cause you to change up your profiles a little bit but when you get weather conditions that are changing always be prepared with a couple different setups in order to try to target these fish because that can really make or break your day you'll go from getting zero bites to catching 20 pounds like that so keep that in mind when you're out there and when I'm really trying to cover water, when you get on a lot of these edges and you're trying to find where those groups of fish are, I'll stick with the Texas rig for the most part because all I'm looking for is one fish to be dumb. And so even if I like fishing an ounce and I think they're gonna eat an ounce the best, I might go to an ounce and a half or an ounce and three quarter just to try to cover water faster, just to try to get a bite because that's all I'm trying to do. And then once I get a bite, then I can put on the baits that I really, really wanna throw and really catch a lot of those fish. And the same thing goes for a drop shot. I might go with a half ounce drop shot weight just to cover water faster when I really only want to be fishing a 3 16 because that way I can actually go back through once I get a bite and really finesse those fish and catch those fish a lot. Obviously I'm not going to do a whole lot with the, with the wacky rig. I'm just going to let that be but that wacky rig's only under really really tough circumstances for me when there's been a lot of tournament pressure or when I've just been in an area that I think I have really really want to catch some more fish out of that I think there's some more big ones in there and I just am not getting bit with my standard ways. So as promised, let's talk about smallmouth and deep grass because smallmouth fishing in deep grass is something people really don't think about and catching them on big weights is something people really never even hear about. I love flipping up north because I never know if I'm going to catch a smallmouth or if I'm going to catch a largemouth and it can be super, super fun catching five pound smallmouth on 65 pound braid and the 7-11 heavy rod and it's something that is just you have to experience it in order to believe it and so the key that you have to look for and this works with northern largemouth as well as finding areas of hard bottom mixed in these grassy areas and so what I'll do is I'll use my side imaging graph and I will put it on black and white because the white areas are going to be hard bottom and that super stands out and I can really pinpoint where the hard bottom is going to be on those grass edges and that's where those small mouth are going to set up you can also look for wind direction to key in where the bait is going to get moved around but on a lot of the lakes that I have I find the same stretches work for me over and over and over again because that hard bottom is always there whether it's rock, whether it's shell beds, it doesn't matter. As long as you have that hard bottom that there's going to be a lot of life around because we all know how much smallmouth love rock, right, and hard bottom. That's no different on any fishery. And so finding those key areas can really, really make or break it. And there's a few different baits that I like to target those fish with. The first one is going to be a drop shot, obviously. That's just a bait that is tried and true, catches a ton of smallmouth. Uh, I also like a Carolina rig. If you get into some of those areas with sparser cabbage, sparser grass, that can really really be something to key in on because you can cover a lot of water with a weightless bait while still getting it through that grass and heavier grass. So I can throw that Carolina rig and drag it through there and you can catch a ton of fish with that bait. Everybody's seen the Bassmaster events up on Champlain. Those guys fishing that grass always have a Carolina rig on their hand or on their deck. It is something that is just a staple when you get into some of this northern grass when smallmouth are mixed in. 
The next is going to be a top water. People don't talk about it a whole lot, but if you can get overcast conditions, a top water and a crankbait can be absolutely fire to fish down the edge of that grass to get those fish to come up and just to throw some more moving baits around there. It can really, really be dynamite because like I said, those fish will suspend under certain conditions and so going to something that's up on the surface can really, really be good at that and getting calling those fish up and getting some explosive bites and you often get bigger fish when you go to some of these moving baits than when you would throwing some of these more finesse baits. Speaking of a Carolina rig, I recently did a video on a Carolina rig that I think you guys are really gonna like. So if you like today's video and you wanna learn a little bit more, check out this video up here where I'm gonna link you to a Carolina rig and everything I think you need to know about it and how amazing it can be for some of these northern smallmouth. So go ahead and give that a try. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. But thank you guys so much for watching. God bless and I hope to see you in the next video.